Hey, welcome to the Lux channel. So, one of the most uh, important uh, data structures uh, when it comes to networking subsystem is uh, uh, net device uh, data structure. So, besides your SK buff data structure, so which is the reason I have covered various episodes on uh, net device data structures, and uh, I have also done various uh, sample programs uh, and as well as. Uh, uh, kernel module so that uh, you can uh, learn this data structure and various uh, member variables of this uh, data structure so in case if you haven't uh, watched the series you can watch the same here uh, i have shot various episodes uh, as you can see here so you can browse through uh, my uh, previous episodes and then in case if you are not familiar with the net device data structure you can browse through the same and uh, as you can see some of the episodes uh, will also contain my uh, sample uh, kernel module uh, which you can uh, try out in your system and then you can further uh, based on that you can do changes on the same so net device data structure is essentially each port is mapped onto a net device data structure so this is the reason it is quite important this also will have references uh, with respect to socket and other information and uh, even uh, whenever you have uh, uh, skbuff uh, data structure uh, each time a packet is associated a within an skbuff data structure it will also have a reference uh, with respect to which uh, device it belongs to so this is one of the most important data structure and that way if you think about um, uh, linux uh, uh, containers and uh, the namespace and the other uh, you know uh, virtualization aspects of uh, uh, linux without a vm uh, so in that way what happens is uh, uh, you get various types of uh, 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 namespaces uh, sometimes you can uh, do process wise uh, uh, isolation uh, or a namespace you can have a file system uh, namespace you can have uh, also network uh, namespace and stuff like that so it's quite interesting in case if you are very new to uh, linux containers and stuff like that uh, you can um, uh, study about lxc and you can study about docker and stuff like that so the uh, interesting thing about uh, uh, containers uh, uh, is uh, unlike uh, you have a, a scenario like uh, you have uh, a hypervisor as you can see here you have an hypervisor let's take an example of type 2 hypervisor in that case you have a linux uh, uh, system so which is why they are representing as uh, hardware and os on top of the operating system you have the hypervisor let's take example like this uh, virtual box so this belongs to the category of uh, uh, type 2 hypervisor in this virtual uh, box i have various uh, vms installed within the same so these vms are complete full fledged operating system uh, installations in that virtual hard drive so in this way you can have multiple vms you can see here you have this uh, vm so let's uh, zoom this file if possible uh, let's just zoom this file so you can see here you have various uh, uh, vms on top of this hypervisor which is virtual box hypervisor so in this way what is happening is you may not get that uh, bare metal uh, performance uh, bare metal performance is uh, you have base operating system installed on, directly on the hardware so in this case this ubuntu system what you see here is the base operating system uh, installed directly on the hardware so other than that you have other scenarios like you have directly a hardware and on top of the hardware you directly have the hypervisor and on top of the hypervisor you can have multiple vms so this comes under the category of um, uh, uh, vmware or something like that where you don't need to install any um, uh you know hypervisor on an operating system all the cases sometimes you can directly use vmware and the vmware itself directly provides a platform for you to install vms on top of uh, the hypervisor so this also provides a very good performance so if you leave these two aspects and hop on to linux containers this is something a sort of a feature which kernel uh, enables the same it's uh, kernel it does this sort of a platform just the way you run user space processes on top of a linux kernel kernel itself provides this isolation and this namespace as the name says namespace it itself says that multi-dimension isolation so this is what exactly kernel provides so that's why with that what you can do is you can now isolate 
a single operating system and you can isolate inside the operating system it can isolate and create the so called containers and you have this uh, you know isolated containers you can have your own processes within the containers you can have your own uh, uh, you know network isolation and uh, stuff like that so whenever i say isolation imagine that is nothing but namespace so so namespace you can uh, assume like it provides a multi dimension also it provides uh, the isolation and it is what we call it as namespace so this is what it is. so so that way you can uh, go through in case if you are interested you can go to uh, lxe and you can read about the, the same in fact their logo itself represents uh, uh, the similar uh, situation over here you can see here logo itself represents you may have uh, something like a hardware layer or the operating system or the kernel and on top of the kernel you have various uh, uh, container so that is what they represent in this way in fact if you see the logo of docker you can see uh, even the docker uh, logo represents the same so it's like that uh, you know blue whale uh, which looks like a container ship uh, carrying various uh, containers so each container itself is isolated so that's what it you know represents so if you hop on to linux uh, kernel source uh, you have this uh, net device uh, data structure i'm uh, going back again to the net device data structure so in the net device data structure uh, you can uh, find a specific member variable as the nd net you can see here and you have this uh, possible net underscore uh, t so this is the sort of uh, uh, data structure instance which provides that uh, uh, namespace uh, with respect to networking so this is where they kind of mention that uh, uh, this particular net device uh, data structure comes under which uh, particular uh, namespace so if you want to refer further you can find in the documentation you can find uh, the uh, nd net documentation here if you scroll up in the net device data structure currently we are inside the net device data structure so if you scroll up you can see its uh, documentation you can see here nd net a uh, network namespace this network device is inside so that's what it meant means the net device is inside with respect to which um, uh, you know network namespace so the reason i need to stress network namespace is as i said there are various types of namespaces one of the type is network namespace so when you do a kernel compilation you can also find this uh, uh, stuff as an option uh, you can enable or disable inside the kernel uh, compilation so if you go to make menu config okay you can find uh, the same uh, and then you can uh, select uh, i mean you can find various type of uh, you know uh, namespaces and one of the uh, namespace is network namespace so you can see here uh, i believe it is in uh, general setup uh, let's search where it comes uh, namespace yeah you can see here it has this uh, namespaces support so if you go here you have this various type of namespaces as i said you have process namespace you have ipc namespace you have uh, a network namespace user namespace and stuff like that so whenever you have user namespace it it provides that uh, uh, isolation for user based uh, processes whereas in this case it provides isolation of network uh, uh, ports and the networking stuff so if you hop on to my other uh, tab so you can see here what i have done is i have uh, uh, created a, a fedora uh, container inside this ubuntu system so you can have uh, uh, you can see here i am starting uh, the same uh, looks like it is already uh, started so that's what it is mentioned so after it is uh, started i am connecting to its console you can see here sudo lxe console and i am providing the namespace uh, i'm sorry <laughs> the container name as a fedora one so as soon as it is inside the uh, the console is connected to that container uh, what i did is i did an uh, if config you can see here so this if config uh, uh, i created this uh, ports inside that particular uh, 
container so we are getting a complete isolated uh, net device data structure instance you can see here so essentially each of this instance each of this instance is an instance of net device data structure as i discussed so far in other episodes so so each instance uh, it is now in the same system but the kernel is providing that isolation and it is providing that extra namespace and it is showing the same so if you open another tab uh, we can see the native uh, uh, network uh, namespace if config you can see here this is the native uh, uh, net device data structure instances of this native ubuntu operating system so next we can uh, hop on to the kernel source once again uh, with this i think uh, you get some uh, fair idea about the same so this is how uh, uh, networking namespaces sort of it works because there are various ways uh, to do you don't need to completely uh, completely get into a container you can still provide the namespace uh, and uh, even uh, you can provide the namespace for individual processes without even container so i'm just showing a sort of a quick idea so that you can grasp to an extent so if you hop on to the same uh, we can again go back to that uh, instance nd net and uh, uh, before uh, discussing the same one interesting thing i would like to note down is uh, if you uh, have a vm inside a virtual box or something if you boot the vm if you run the vm please understand it doesn't run this way uh, whereas in this case the kernel itself provides that sort of you know um, uh, platform so if you do anything and if you crash the system inside here uh, essentially uh, to an extent it is going to affect uh, the main kernel as well because here you are inside here and if you do you name minus r essentially you are nothing uh, but uh, you are using the same kernel so in case if you do you name minus r here and you name minus r it is going to be the same kernel as you can see here it is uh, uh, 413 uh, 0 hyphen 32 uh, kernel so this is what it is so essentially you are using the same kernel uh, for different uh, uh, namespaces or different containers so this way which uh, it tells that if you do some goof up here and if you uh, crash the system it is going to crash the entire system so this is the reason if you go back and uh, you know check this uh, diagram what is it tells is all these uh, isolations or uh, multi dimensions are existing in the same kernel platform so that's what it is but the advantage is you get very good performance you get almost like a bare metal performance uh, versus you do something like type 2 hypervisor where you have some sort of a, a virtual box uh, uh and there are various vms on top of this uh, virtual box let's uh you know get back to the kernel source so you can see here uh, 1881 you can see here nd net and we can open this uh, data structure so if you open this data structure as you can see here it is inside the folder include net uh, net namespace dot h so if you open the same you can see here uh, you have this uh, config net ns and that's exactly what you have it in uh, make menu config uh, let us go here so if you do a quest in here i'm sorry uh, okay okay exit and uh, help is h you can see here uh, if you check the documentation of that particular uh, parameter uh, you can see here config net ns uh, config net network names so that's what you have it so that's what is this option is all about so if you select this option essentially you have this thing enabled or disabled over here so that's what it is so it is uh, having its own instance of uh, uh, struct uh, network struct net uh, data structure i believe once i have even uh, done a video episode on this as well so if not i may do it in the future because i have done various episodes on uh, soc uh, struct soc etc uh, etc etc et so i still remember sometime i have done uh, some video episodes on the same so anyway so if you go here you can see here it is controlled by the same and you have various other um, apis uh, uh, surrounding the same and if you little scroll up you have this um, you know um, you have this uh, you know data structure uh, which is you know corresponds to the same and uh, you have various other um, you know apis and other uh, control uh, uh, logic for the same so that's what it is 
so if you are curious uh, what you can do is you can have uh, some kind of uh, print case uh, and uh, anytime you create a specific namespace you can do any print uh, print case so that you can trace exactly uh, what particular apis are getting triggered and as well as what these uh, apis are getting uh, associated into and what exactly they are doing so which is something like that you can uh, you know learn the same yeah so you can see here you have this apis and uh, i believe um, anything to do with this uh, uh, particular uh, uh, parameter you can see here dev net and you have this uh, namespace uh, in lines you have this apis uh, this is within the net device data structure i just came out of that a particular file net underscore net namespace dot as you must have noticed i'm again back to net device data structure uh, file so net device .h and inside you have these apis you can see here uh, dev net and you have this uh, you can you have this uh, reference uh, uh, you know uh, net device of uh, or dev of uh, nd net and they are doing uh, uh, read pnet and i believe this read pnet is uh, an api ah uh, yeah you can see here it's an api within this uh, net underscore namespace .h. so i don't like to go much in depth maybe in future i may do some uh, sample code so that whenever you do something with namespaces uh, it uh, shows uh, the back end uh, whatever api is getting invoked and uh, uh, some kind of association uh, within this uh, various uh, you know data structures and uh, the api flow uh, so that way uh, you can uh, trace the same you can see here write pnet and in this case you have this api write pnet and it is doing the same and each time it is surrounded by uh, this uh, parameter so that anytime if you compile the kernel without this uh, namespace uh, entire logic will get uh, disabled in the runtime so that's what it is so you can go here so this way you can trace uh, various other instances uh, various other apis not only here even you can trace uh, uh, various other places like uh, 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 you have this uh, the main part of networking sus subsystem uh, net uh, core you know device dot h let's see in case here we have any references looks like it doesn't have here uh, so this way anyway you can uh, search overall and then you can see in, uh, uh, which way it uh, provides this isolation and uh, you know namespace uh, logic so i just barely touch the surface so that we get that sort of you know starting point uh, uh, where it corresponds to this particular uh, you know isolation or the namespaces so with this i would like to conclude this episode hope you guys loved watching this video so in case if you have any questions about a net device data structure or else uh, sk buff data structures or else it can be about uh, a networking subsystem or file subsystem or it can be anything about uh, uh, generic linux or uh, system software programming uh, be in touch via mail so thank you once again for watching this video take care have a nice day bye bye